you know, I just feel like what the Holy Spirit keeps saying is just be here. Just be here. And the last few days have been real hectic for me, and I've just been kind of pulling back and spending some alone time. And after class today, I went to the park and just walked around for an hour. It's like I just needed to, like, connect to the Holy Spirit. I feel like I've been in such a mode of doing, doing, doing. Um, and, I, and that really brings up a question for me. It certainly, in my, in my mind, seems like it would be the simple thing to do to just become very focused on the Course, like get out of nursing, um, and not have to deal with all these outside things, and just focus. When I'm, when I'm just doing the Course, it seems relatively easy. And I know that I use the outside things, and it probably wouldn't matter if I was out of nursing or not, um, that I would still find something to run interference with the Holy Spirit right now because of my fear. Um, but I do notice that um, there, it seems like, and I know this is because I'm in, a, in my wrong mind, that there's conflict going on. Like I can't, quote, do life, unquote, and get the course. That I, what I'd like to do is just be able to sit down and not deal with anything else. Mm -hmm. Just how I feel. And I can't do that right now. Yeah, it, it came in my life that it was kind of like, if, if there's two directions, you know, Jesus at one point says, you may have noticed how different the goals this course are advocating from the goals you held before. It's like, ha, huh, tell me about an understatement. I mean, that's, that's putting it mildly. I mean, it's, they are totally diametrically in opposite directions. And we've talked about that whole thing of trying to see two worlds. You know, I would say, if just like you said, if I still value the old goal, then I'll value the world that proceeds from the old goal. You know, I'll perceive it as a threat if I even think I have to let go of that old world because I still value the old goal. And to me, as we keep coming together, we just want to get clear on the goals or the purposes in the mind, because then it, it just starts to bring a clarity. The ego's goal is death, and in all of the different forms it seems to take, even the ones that seem attractive to the mind on the surface are still death, and we just want to kind of keep moving towards the center of its thought system just, just to see the insanity of it, to let it go. Would it be appropriate to read um, the branching of the road on page 444? It's like about... I think we could, but I really think right now we could just go into it and let the Spirit move among, among us and, you know, I am the branching of the road. But it's not in that book. I offer it right now and, and to go into it. And it's scary, I know, because you don't even have a book to shield, to go into, but um, but I think that can be. We the thing we want to do is we want to just try to follow this in as we can as much as we can to try to get some real clarity on it and everything. Do these things relating? What was the the issues yeah. that you were? I wanted to make sure everybody had a chance to bring up their their issues. I'm sure they all relate. <laughs> <laughs> there is only one problem and one solution. Um, I just notice um, thoughts that I have had coming up today and even yesterday. Again, <laughs> it seems like the teaching device is, is the car. And yesterday it was actually Krista's car. And today it has to do with the car I was driving. And, I mean, what happens is of no, happen is of no consequence, really. But I, the feelings or the perceptions or the thoughts that I had had to do with um, feeling like someone else had the upper hand and that I was being taken or had, that it was my word against theirs, that I was being unfairly treated or misunderstood. And I would think all that goes back to the authority problem. Mm -hmm. And I would just... That's definitely what was going on with me yesterday. <laughs> uh -huh. And I, I, I mean, I, I had a sense of how that might have felt because because I was kind of identifying with how I would have felt maybe in the same, or have, have felt, I don't know 
have felt at least in the past, when that kind of thing would go on. And I just, it feels to me like it's a, its a, since it's still in my thoughts, it feels like it's, it's something that I want to go into more and get clearer about so that, that I cease having those thoughts. <laughs> and just run through them again, being taken advantage being of. Being taken advantage one. of, um, someone else having the upper hand, being had, my word against theirs, being unfairly treated, being misunderstood. But I think the big things are being taken, being had, my word against theirs, and, and in the end, basically, that they have the upper hand, that I'm kind of at their mercy. Mm-hmm. This victimization again. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, we have this perceptual world now, and there seems to be... If we could really get beneath everything that's been raised today, you know, we can start to see that everything rests on duality in the world. There would be no point in talking about a struggle I was feeling when I was talking with Kathy or being taken or had at a, from a car, taking my car in, or any, anything that we've talked about. I mean, all the things that have been discussed presume a duality in the world, being taken advantage by another, my word against their word. You can hear, it doesn't matter, all the different forms, but the underlying thing is that there's duality. So we could really boil it down into most simple terms and say, gee, all of those are predicated on my belief that there is duality in this world. And what we need to start to do is to start... Another way we could come at it is to say points of view. There seem to be so many points of view. My view, their view. My friend's view, my husband's view. What so-and-so is going through. How would you, what would you do? Would you leave your daughter behind? You know, all these things are predicated on duality. I mean, duality is assumed to be reality. And it doesn't matter whether you've studied the Course or whether you've studied Hinduism or all uh, the different religions. The, the core of all the religions point to unity. And even philosophers who have gone into this still come to the point where, okay, so there doesn't seem, so that there's nothing apart from mind, where did the duality come in? And how do you, how did the duality come about? And how does it so seem to be so real if unity is the fact of it? So, that's where we have to get to this whole thing of, of is the duality real? Or am I projecting a conflict that's in my mind out into the world and seeing it as if it's between persons, institutions, schools of thought, you know, forces of nature, on and on and on out there in a dualistic world? Because what I'm going to propose is, and what the Course is teaching is that, is as long as we believe in the in a real, factual world of duality that is outside our minds and outside our persons, that has a reality, that as long as we believe that, that there is no alleviation of the pain, there is no escape from the conflict, until we're ready to really, really question everything, which is the underpinnings of everything. This is not something that comes up usually in casual conversation. This is really deep down. If, my, if the fundamental way that I've been seeing is, is messed up and distorted, then it's no wonder then that I would perceive all these problems in daily, so-called daily life and that they would seem to recur over and over and over without a seeming end at hand. So it's that thing, the, the fundamental belief to have a world of duality would be that ideas can leave their source. I mean, where in the world... So to speak, or where would this world of duality come from? It, it seems to be out of control at times. It seems to have have a life of its own. It just seems to be self-perpetuating. Can we back up for just a moment? Mm-hmm. How does having the belief that ideas can leave their source create a dual world. I lost you there. Okay. If 
if ideas can leave their source, then there seems to be a way that this tunis can come about. In other words, something seems to have left the mind and to have a reality of itself. I mean, duality and conflict is a is a belief in the mind, and it, if it seems to have a reality out on, outside of the mind, then it would have to leave its source. Another thing is, if we relate it back to a, a more abstract thing of heaven, is that God is spirit, the Son is spirit, that the Son is an idea in the mind of God, and therefore there is no duality or separation in that view. So that's basically the, the premise that ideas cannot leave their source, and Christ has not left his Father's mind. If, if ideas can leave their source, then that's the, whole, that's the whole basis of the making of the world. I sometimes think of it in terms of breaking apart. If ideas can leave their source, then they break apart, and then you have two things. You have ideas here, and you have the source here. And that's the duality. That's the two-ness. So it's like um, there's me, and then there's in my thoughts break away. So there's me, and my thoughts break away so that those go out in the world, and so then it seems like the world against me. That kind of thing? Like, w once the mind accepts that there has been the breaking apart, that there is two, you know, there's the idea broken away from the source, two things, idea and source, then the way that gets played out is the duality and, and is perceiving, you know, me against them, this against that, this versus the, the other. There's always, there's always a tunes, and they're always like... You know, they're they're not in harmony. They don't reflect the oneness. They reflect the conflict that that is inherent in breaking apart, in separating. So how does that relate to the gas or the car guy? Well, it's still seeing me against him, his word against my word. Which is the ego world. Mm -hmm. Which is the world of illusion. Mm -hmm. There seems to be this strong conflict between persons. I mean, it seems as if in the world that that you know you you're given so much time to live on this earth, and sometime or other, everyone seems to conflict. I mean, even the special loved ones <laughs> seem to have be rubbing up and like grating on this person. Like the person's like, "Give me a break! Give me some space!" And there's such a friction that goes on there. And the, the idea that ideas leave their source is, is the belief that, that I'm not whole and eternal, you know. I have left my source in heaven. I mean, that's the basis of the belief in separation, is that I have left heaven. So I have left my source there. And, and not only that, is that all of these, other, all the figures in the dream are apart from the little I now. This, I'm a little person sleeping now, or I'm a little person in, in the dream world, and all of these other persons have separate realities with private minds and private thoughts, completely apart from my little mind, private. And you can see where that's a belief that ideas can leave their source, because there is that separateness and that duality. And also, whenever I have a, an upset, do I, in the sleeping sense, do I think, oh, it's just my perceptual problem? I can I could forgive and see peace instead of this, or do I want hold on to the reality that this is another person? This person at this car dealership or this mechanic is taking advantage of me, or this this friend is attacking me, or any of the different things. You can see what's beneath that is a belief that I'm not just viewing my ideas like like this whole world, this and all these people and everything are just my ideas. There would be no threat in that, but if, but if I believe ideas have left their source and that these people are have nothing to do with me, now it's like they have nothing at all to do, that man saying that to me when I was getting my car or my friend saying that, then you can see where the friction is inevitable from that perspective.